Good afternoon, everyone. Now we're on. Thank you so much for coming to our In Conversation. And we have a bevy of fantastic, talented, wonderful people up here on stage who, if you were at the afternoon show, you would have seen on stage this afternoon. And if you're coming tonight, you'll see some of them on stage again. Well, everyone except for Eichel <laughs> on stage tonight for, for this evening's performance. So it's a great thrill to have all of our Emma Grays who are um, performing with us, actually almost all. Teresa's not here. But um, wonderful artists who have spent a lifetime in the theatre um, and have come back for this very wonderful season of Graham Murphy's Nutcracker, The Story of Clara. And the reason we love this production is not only because we have these great artists on stage, but we also have 20 children. So we swell the whole company to about 100 dancers. So when you're... Um, when you see everyone on stage, there's a whole lot of people that make this production the magical production that it is. First choreographed in 1992 and in its 25th anniversary season this year. So I thought it would be really interesting, first of all, to ask everyone about their careers a little bit, the potted version, and then, um, and then talk about from where that moment where they... Um, where they were on stage performing through to now and what the difference is. So, Colin, do you want to start seeing as you're up that end? Let's let's do the your your history. This could take this could take the whole make yourself comfortable. This could take this could take the whole afternoon, but tell us how you started dancing, Colin. Uh, by mistake. <coughs> uh, mainly because I uh, I was going to be an architect. God bless me. Look at this. Uh, and um my sister wanted to make her debut, as when sisters made debuts, and her boyfriend wouldn't partner her in the, the pr progressive waltz you had to do for the, for the debut. So I was asked to partner her. And I'd never danced before in my life, so I said, look, I'll only do it if I can go and, and take lessons. And eventually, to, to cut a long story short, I did take lessons, and the bug bit. I became a ballroom dancer, and I loved every minute, did every bloody medal you can do, and did exhibition dancing. And to further the exhibition dancing along, I decided I needed to do lifts with the girl, which I could do, but the only f unfortunate thing was every time I put her down, she ended up in a heap on the floor. So I needed to learn how to put the girl down so that she didn't look like a mess. <laughs> so I went, to, I went to an adagio class, and, and it grew until I eventually took my first ballet class at 10.30 at night because I'd worked during the day and did all this afterwards. And uh, it was with Valerie Tweedy, who was one of our, one of our Claras in, in Nutcracker. And Valerie Tweedy said, uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, you can do, I want to do a jazz class there. She said, yes, you can do a jazz class if you do one classical class. And I thought, not on your nilly, darling. So I went away to where I was uh, watching before and uh, decided, no, I'll have to go back. So I said, yes, on, on two, uh, two, uh, two uh, um, um, whatever you say. Providers. Uh, uh, two providers. A and, uh, and she said, what, this, is, this, is a, this is a student telling a, a teacher what to do. A and, and she said, what is that? I said, one, it's a private lesson. And two, I don't have to wear tights. So I did my first private lesson at 10.30 at night and the bug bit. Classical ballet is wonderful. Not only is it a, a, a lovely art form, but it's a logical art form. So if you want to approach it uh, with a brain as well as a body, it, 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 it really fulfills you. And that's how it all started. Uh, just before I hand it over, uh, and, um, Nutcracker has a long history in the Australian Ballet Company as well. Uh, we started in 1962, and I was part of the uh, the first company of the Australian Ballet before David was born, incidentally. It but was, actually. I was born in 63, so... You, you, you see? Uh, God bless me. I did something wrong. Uh, 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 and uh, in 1963, we did our, a matinee season of Nutcracker up here at the, at, at the Princess Theatre, uh, and then went and rehearsed in the afternoon. So we only did a matinee, uh, morning matinee season. And uh, it was David Lachine's version of a Nutcracker, and it was the old Borovansky version. We used all of Borovansky's costumes, a lovely old version. Uh, David Lachine was a really good choreographer. And Elaine Haxon, I think, was the, was the designer. Uh, uh, who? 
was I right? Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Was the, uh, uh, and uh, uh, beautiful designs. And I played the part of Drosselmeyer. Da, 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 da. So, and you would have been in that production, I Audrey. I was. I did the tray pack, which was in a tutu. Oh, and wow. And I danced with Garth Welsh. My gosh, so yes. the Russian was a, was a duet. Yes, so David Lachine, he created that role for me. And yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, well so 56, 1956. 1956, yes. wow. Mm. So yeah. was that the first Nutcracker that Borovansky did? Or yes. Wow. Mm. So really, relatively, Nutcracker is a fairly new ballet for Australia then. Mm, probably it was, yes, yeah. but it was very... 1956, Christmas, December, yeah, wow. in Sydney at the Empire. Golly yeah, which is no longer there. Yeah. What you wore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a tutu, we were told. A tutu, uh, yeah. <laughs> on point. So, so, so when, when did the ballet bug bite you, Audrey? Well, I came from a biggish country town, Townsville, North Queensland, which, you know, when I was growing up, it only had 33,000. Now it's a big army town, of course, 150,000. So I learned ballet. I started when I was five. I came home after two lessons and said, it all hurts, so I don't want to go back. <laughs> and so my mother let me stop. And then it wasn't until I was 10 that I suddenly said I wanted to learn ballet again. And she said, well, only sit down, Audrey, only if you will stick at it. So I'm still sticking at it. <laughs> <laughs> you were true to your word. And so when you, um, when you trained, because this was pre you know, the Australian Ballet School. Did you just train in Well, I Townsville? trained in Townsville. I had an RAD teacher, you know, did all the exams and everything. But I also did acrobatics. I loved that. Oh, Contortion wow. work, I loved that. And yeah. I loved Highland dancing, tap dancing. That was part of it all. But I did all my exams every year. And I won a small scholarship to go to Sydney. And I did full time with Francis Gully oh, while right. I was there. Borovansky was reforming his mm -hmm. company in 1950-51, the Jubilee Company, mm -hmm. and he came to Sydney to audition dancers. I auditioned by mistake. I was told I was too young and I wasn't. I had to you stay in the back go. line. Yeah. Anyway, and how old were you then? I was 16. Wow. And then I got into the company and <laughs> came to Melbourne. And uh, I remember the first day I had to go and have an interview with Boro, and uh, he said to me, "How old are you?" And I said, I'm 16, but I'll be 17 next year. I thought <laughs> I... <laughs> what time of the year is this? I in, thought I'd in get, March I or something? Have, I wouldn't get the job. <laughs> no, it was a wonderful... Well, it was... I hadn't really studied with men. We had all lady teachers, you know, with Scully, Daintree, all of those pots and that. And uh, suddenly uh, it was all men and, and strange accents, you know, language. And, and uh, so it was... I was very naive and... I can remember thinking, oh, but the language of ballet is the same. So, you know, I settled in and I loved it. Mm. So I went from there to another scholarship, took me to England. I went to Rombear and came back to Borrow. And then I did other things with Ballet Guild, television in the very pioneer days, you know, 10 years of Gosh. television. And that's where I met Colin. Colin. My gosh. And um, he taught me everything about modern dance because I didn't do that. But he <laughs> <laughs> <Badly>. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no, he was good. No, but so we had a big association. Wow. Yes. And, Graham, that was sort of the beginning of your start, wasn't it, in that sort of television world? Um, uh, after 1954, oh, when, right. I, when I started, yeah. um, doing tap and theatrical dance. And this was in Perth, wasn't this it? This was in Perth. Yes. Yes, it was a wonderful town. Hello, Perth people. Yes. <laughs> and th theatrical dance involved, you know, um, high kicks, uh, Russian dance, acrobats, um, everything you could think of. Um, we all did that. And they, w of course, wanted me to do ballet. And I said, no, not doing ballet because you have to wear tights. tights. <laughs> <laughs> Boys in Perth didn't wear tights. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then it, it took until I, I was 17, th television started. I was in the first ever group that, uh, that danced live on television every Monday night. Uh, horrendous. <laughs> uh, and, um, and then came the Perth City Ballet. Ray Powell from the Australian Ballet came over to Perth said, um, you know, pulled together a, a group and 
I had I had never pointed my foot properly before, and and they also I went into the audition and they said, well you know that you can't really dance anything unless you do classical ballet. So I started doing classes. I was 17, 18 or something. And then when I was 19, went to the Australian Ballet School. And um, sort of the rest is about history. Mm. Mm. So you, you were actually trained at the ballet school as well before, before two joining the years, company? Two years at the ballet school. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, on a, a bursary because, you know, we were poor. And, and, and they gave... They gave a lot of bursaries. It was, it was the only way a lot of... Yeah. There were four boys came over from Perth at the same time and we all came over on bursaries because none of us could have afforded to do the travel and stay and mm -hmm. do all that stuff. Yeah, the school, yeah, the school was wonderful. Yeah, no, yeah. it was and is, continues to be. And in fact, Christine is there. As, I am um, there. Christine <laughs> is, is the Australian Ballet School because when I was a student at the Australian Ballet School, Christine was teaching. You must have been about 12 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. Um, but it, it does feel that the connection between the school and the company has been very much about the fabric of my life, I feel. I, I'm surprised at that how long and how many years the association has been and it's almost 50 years. <laughs> because I was there as a student um, joining at 17 years of age. But another very special connection <laughs> is Audrey Nichols because I was fortunate to be taught by Audrey from five years until joining the Australian Ballet what, School. What, age five? Yeah. From five. Oh, my God. All my formative classical was wow. through How Audrey and Eve King. Oh yes, in Malvern. God, so I'm yeah. Melbourne-born. And I feel like I'm very much Victoria Melbourne Association because from the school I had I think as a couple of us know, remember a very special lady of character dance, of which I do and have taught since, um, Marina Berezovsky. <laughs> and it was where I suppose I uh, transferred my passions and allegiances and probably my skill set to character dance. And uh, after so many years, I'm still there. So I really feel it's a tribute to a very many number of different things. Uh, prior to that, of course, I was fortunate with Marina to be part of her company and raised to the ranks of principal and be an assistant artistic director. And as you could in those days, um, Maggie, Maggie Scott, a very much important person in my life as well, um, offered uh, a tra teacher traineeship. So I worked under Marina with Maggie and that was in the mid-70s, late-70s and I'm still here. How brilliant. And because and, Marina was quite an extraordinary woman, um, Marina Berezovsky, wasn't she? Yeah, I, mean, I think I pale into a personality background. She was a very strong Ukrainian woman uh, experiencing the war and the transition of that, the, that impact on her life. So she was very much uh, a dictator in the class, but filled it with her, her passions and her traditions mm -hmm. and her skills. So most of the girls were petrified. Most of the boys were very, very um, comfortable with her because she certainly looked after the young men in the class <laughs> in the sense of she, she could exploit their, their strengths and all the, what the, you would say, the, the stylistic cliches of Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, Moldavian dance. So, but I must have weathered those storms a number, for a number of years and, you know, fortunate I have still many, many memories and many steps that we all were taught <laughs> and they're part of the culture of the Australian <laughs> Ballet School. Which yeah. we're doing again now. Yeah. We yeah. are. <laughs> I try and slip a little bit of those Christine, folk nally, Christine's Cri in them. Christine, can I just say? Yes. One of the classes that uh, Marina gave, um, we knew it was her birthday, so all the boys got together, sang a happy birthday well, she invited us to her house that afternoon uh -huh. and we had cake, we had food. Oh it was God. wonderful. She was a wonderful person. She uh, was. Yeah, yeah. And that was Collarbock, her company, wasn't yes, that, it? Yes, that's yeah. true. That, um, I think, was formative in the mid-70s mid and then was given grants by the Arts Council and it toured Australia-wide and new, I suppose it was uh, New Zealand too at the time. Mm. And it had a, uh, a very celebrated time when the councils were wanting to identify our multicultural mm. skill sets in dance. So it, it carried us all through a very, you know, colourful professional career. Mm. And then it, it, it 
took as a consequence of funding, I suppose, it did have it can take it did come off the company, I suppose, landscape. Mm. Yeah. And there's really no sort of folkloric um not in the same format. Mm. I think governments have now decided to redirect their funds to the communities themselves to foster their own uh, retention yeah, and culture. development yeah. and nurturing of their cultures. So there hasn't been a professional company since. Yeah. And Franco, another ABS graduate. We another were at the ABS. school around the same time. Yeah, around the same yeah. time. But um, I first uh, started dancing, doing jazz ballet uh, when I was 19 um, in the city with Jeanette Liddell. And uh, after a couple of months of uh, jazz ballet, I thought, well, this is, this is good. I, um, so I heard that uh, there were auditions happening at the Victorian College of the Arts. So I went along with my jazz shoes and auditioned. And <laughs> I remember Anne Williams saying, uh, do you not have ballet shoes? It was, it was a ballet audition. And I said, no, I don't. And so they hunted around. They came back with Alan Alder's shoes. Oh, my God. And they said, here, put these on. So I did the audition. I had no idea, no idea what I was doing, looking behind me, looking in front. Anyway, I got in. Wow. <laughs> And uh, they saw so the natural talent. Natural talent, absolutely. So I did two years there, and then uh, and Igel was my one of my teachers there at the college, and uh, and then I auditioned for the Australian Ballet School and was accepted there. And uh, Christine was one of my the character teachers there, and um, so graduated from the school, um, went and danced with the Royal New Zealand Ballet. I did a couple yeah. of tours with the company, the Australian Ballet, yeah. while I was at the school. I uh, went to the Royal New Zealand Ballet and then um, I returned home and freelanced and did some musicals and operas and conventions and whatever, cabaret, as you do. And then um, the work was starting to fizzle out and I was starting to get a little bit old because I started quite – I was 19 when I started. So, um, And then I went and did the notation course in London and then returned home and um, came oh, – well, I first of all went on the staff at the school – for nearly a year um, and then joined the company as um, artistic administrator. And for many years. And worked very yeah. many years with David. Yeah, thankfully. It was, was wonderful, <laughs> exactly. And, um, and now, now that sort of whole circle has returned because you're going back to your performance roots. Yeah, and you know, when I was dancing, I was always always more interested in the acting roles. I was never very good at the physical stuff, but I was really passionate about character roles. And, you know, Colm was one of my idols, Ray Powell, you know, Mary Duchesne, all those people that... Ken Whitmore, all those people that were doing all these amazing acting roles. And, and that's... I sort of followed that. And I think that was recognised when I was at the school as well because I was doing things like Drosselmeyer even at the yeah, school. Yeah. Um, and so now... Um, I just feel so in the right place doing what I'm doing now and really enjoying what I'm doing now. It's brilliant. And Igel, this could be the story of your life, I darling, know. because you were born in, in the Soviet Union, as yes. it was then. Uh, well, my first introduction to the ballet and to the opera and to the theatre altogether was in a small provincial town on the Volga Riga River, Kazan. At age of eight, I went with my parents to Leningrad, St. Petersburg, we call it now, and I auditioned for the Vaganova Ballet School. I've been accepted, and I stayed in St. Petersburg for nine years in boarding school, seeing my parents only once a year for a month and a half. So I went to school at eight, and I graduated when I was 18. Nutcracker is a very, very dear ballet to me because it brings so many memories, not only because it's a marvelous and a beautiful music of our Russian composer Tchaikovsky, but it's also, it's also uh, brings the memory of being a little Clara. In Russia, we call it Mashinka. I was uh, at age of 10 performing as a little Clara. And as I graduated from Vaganov Ballet School, I graduated with the Nutcracker as a Clara. So it was just every time I hear its music on the radio, like in the ballet, you will see. <laughs> yes, it's really, it's a real, real true story. It brings 
fabulous, fabulous story, uh, memory of childhood and your life. Now, I was um, about in mid-20s when I came to Australia, and I'd been uh, accepted into the ballet company and worked as a dancer under directorship of Dame Peggy Van Prague, and later on with Sir Robert Heldman. I spent very, very few years with the company for different reasons. I was eager to have a family, do ironing and washing <laughs> and shopping, because all my life I did batman tendu, grand jetés, pirouettes. So I was fascinated with the other side of the life. So I stayed with the company for very, very few years, but they were most happy and memorable years. It was a beautiful company. And of course, it was absolutely great to work with them, Peggy Van Prague and uh, Sir Robert Heldman. But I was very, very fortunate. As I retired, I still continue my career as a, as a teacher, as a coach, and um, even attempted to reproduce some of the ballet, not only in Australia, which is my beautiful country, but also abroad. And I'm very, very happy to do and recreate a role of uh, Clara again. About nine years ago, I think nine or eight years ago. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. nine years ago, I was in Russia in a small provincial town where my sister lived. And I just came home with her from her vegetable garden where we were, wait, where we were sorting potatoes. <laughs> so I was washing my hands and my sister said, there is a foreigner on the phone, but he doesn't, he doesn't sound like Andrew. Andrew is my husband who speaks a few languages. So I picked up the phone. It was 2008, 2009, yes. And it was David. <laughs> and I said, David, what are you doing? Ring there. So David was gracious enough, and I'm so grateful. He asked me to join the company and uh, create the role of Clara, and uh, that was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And I'm very grateful, and now I'm repeating it again. <laughs> so that's my story. That's yes. brilliant, Fabulous. brilliant. And Joseph, yes. I remember you when you were a dancer in the company because I was in the school and you were, you were always the most fantastic character dancer. And, and character the longest artist. blonde hair. And the longest blonde <laughs> hair. So tell us, how did that begin? Well, f firstly, may I say, this has been fantastic to be uh, involved with Nutcracker because some of these people I've known for over 50 years. It's really extraordinary. Um, for me, I suppose my mother was an inspiration. Um, I was born in a refugee camp in Germany and my mother taught what they called plastic or expressive dance to the girls and I used to go and sit there and watch. And I suppose that was an inspiration, seeing all these girls finding dead birds and bringing them to life and all that sort of stuff that they did. And uh, at the age of 11, uh, we moved to Australia, and at the age of 11, I started to learn ballet and um, eventually joined the Australian Ballet School. I was the, the inaugural member there, and that's over 53 years? Yes, that's right. 53 yeah, years ago. And um, it was wonderful to hear Christine talk of um, Madame Beresovsky. She's really close to my heart. She was lovely. Um, it's, it's, ballet is a fantastic form, uh, an art form. And um, when I joined the company, I was with them for 17 years. I did have long blonde hair, yes. <laughs> uh, and people see me now and they say, what happened to your blonde hair? Well, it's <laughs> grey now. And I was talking earlier to the guys, uh, uh, there was Jack Manuel, who was a wonderful uh, character here in Melbourne, and uh, he hadn't seen me for a number of years, and um, he then bumped into me at one of the performances, and he looked at me and he said, weren't you Joseph Janositis? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, um, after I left the company, uh, after 17 years, had a wonderful wonderful time we toured and i think in the time i was there we toured to over 40 odd countries and the tours used to be grueling but very interesting we used to do i think the longest tour we did was six months and that was to new zealand and south america and then the others were 
for instance, the tour we did with Nureyev to the US, that was 26 cities in three, three months. It was really grueling. So um, it's, it's really lovely to be with these, these people that uh, I hold close. Mm. Yeah. So as you can see, an amazing array of talent that we have together on stage for this, this production. But how long was it since you last performed before The Nutcracker? Me? Mm. Uh, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. You well, didn't, well, that's what the last time well I... Yeah, yeah, exactly, when we did... Um, no. It was... Raymonda. Raymonda. Yeah. What about you, Igor? B before, when you did Nutcracker, how long had it been since you'd been on stage oh, before I, then? Oh, I graduated. I graduated. I, um, I stopped dancing with the ballet company in 1978. And you, yes. Gosh, <laughs> so that was... Yes, so a very was short career but with the Australian Ballet Company. But uh, in 1978, I stopped dancing. And... Um, after working as a coach, uh, you invited me in 2009. Yeah. So it's, Gosh. let's so count. <laughs> <laughs> Better not. <laughs> Better not. And what was it like for you to come back onto the stage uh, after well, such a Well, it's time? surprisingly, I, I, I think because of my training, and it was a marvellous, fantastic training of many years in the, such a great institution of the best probably in Russia at that time. So you, it's kind of... Within you, you breathe, you live with it. So it wasn't very, very difficult. The only thing is difficult now, David, I found, <laughs> it's at the last reverence, you have to put point shoes. Yeah. And <laughs> you walk, you, we're not on, and you walk and you wobble. <laughs> and you think, how come? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the most difficult thing after long retirement. <laughs> yes. Putting those point shoes on. Point shoes well, on. Frank, you never really stopped dancing, did you? Well, really? I stopped dancing in about 92 when I went to London to do the Benish course. But um, then having come back and worked here um, in administration, I had I was I had the opportunity to, to be, you know, thrown into all these acting roles, which was great. Um, so, yeah, I haven't so really, really stopped perf kept up to performing. performing the whole time. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't, wasn't a, an unusual experience to come back no, into this No, not at all. Not at all. No. And, Christine, you're pretty much the same. You've been in a lot of our shows, which has been wonderful. It has been, probably over about 20 years as well. Yeah. And with the ballet school, we've had our own uh, productions. Mm. Where I believe it might have been Mark and Ear's, uh Picnic at Hanging Rock. And so that gave me the opportunity of being... Uh, the headmistress <laughs> at that time. And I think Maina was then, uh, must have seen that performance during Morning Melodies and so the, the chapter of performing with the company began with hers, with joining with Corinne and us. So yeah. Did you, was, it, um, was it nice to be back after having... It's, it's wonderful each time and I feel particularly blessed <laughs> and privileged to still be able to practice a craft that is now, you know... Mm. Part of us all. Yeah. You and my wife and Karina now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. I, I remember you now. <laughs> one of those marriages. One of the many marriages on stage. Many of them. Yeah. But Graham, it was a bit different for you though, wasn't it? Because you, when did you stop, you know, your official performance career? Seventy-three. And did the you? End of seventy-three. And then did you perform again at all before uh, this season? No, I went to university. Oh my God! Yeah. And and I did a, a a couple of you know guesting things with uh, senior students at ballet schools, um, doing the odd Nutcracker and the Swan Lake, and pretending that you were still a dancer. And um, I did university for four years, and then went out into the big wide world oh as a senior public servant. Wow! So not a lot of needing for um, you know. Putting your makeup on and um, <laughs> and and got so absorbed in in a, a real career because when we were <laughs> when we were out uh, like doing country tours and we'd see meet new people all the time every city and and they'd stand around having you know a cup of tea and a scone and say and and say what do you do for a real job <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was it was common. That that they actually thought that we were, we just did this part time, and we were, you know, and and especially for boys, boys were meant to have a real job, and dancing wasn't a real job. 
So, um, I, um, so it was actually 45 years to when I got the letter from David and, w and I knew I wanted to do it but I, I thought I can do it physically because I was still in shape physically so I, I knew I could probably do the steps and then I started to think but what about the rest of it? And being part of a group, um, you know, th that responsibility of, of, of remembering at the age of 72 um, the steps and would the steps come back when the music played and, uh, and, and if, if I forgot the step then the rest of the stage would all be put out. Because when you, when you come through your ballet school and, and your first years in the company, that sort of quarter ballet thing that, that you know just subconsciously what the rest of the stage is doing and you're a part of it and, and it all just happens. Mm. And I wasn't sure whether that would happen again. Mm. But it did. And, and it, uh, well, it took a couple of weeks. <laughs> 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 we we did a lot of rehearsal in those couple of weeks, and and yes, it did come back. So mm. it was remarkable. But Audrey, you never really stopped either, no, did you? I was a black as well. We right through. And also oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I was like Chris. I ran a ballet school, of course, and we had productions, and I'd be in them and doing things. And I um, yes, and then of course. Um, you know, 25 years ago, I was asked uh, to come into Nutcracker. Thank you, David, or whoever well, it was. It was Mainer back Mainer then. then. Well, probably yeah. Mainer and, then and you Graham. Kept, but you've been keeping asking me back for well, other things as well. Because <laughs> you're so lovely. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, yes, it was uh, – and I love it. And I'm very grateful that I'm doing so this. So the Nutcracker first season was the first time you performed with the Australian Ballet? It was the first wow, time. Gosh. Yes, I hadn't danced with the company because I married and had children mm. And, of course, in those days you had to stop. You couldn't do what you can do today. Yeah. And uh, But I did stay with television for a long time and then just productions and things with the ballet school. And mm. and then, of course, um, I've had a few things now with um, the company all the time and I love it. Yeah. And I must say um, it's been wonderful working with all these wonderful artists. Mm. And especially, I have to say, you know, Cole, because he's been there f for a long time and part of my life too. A long mm. time. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, Colin, been... you never stopped performing, did you? Like, you know... <laughs> well, exactly. The, I mean, from the minute you, you started dancing, obviously your career has never been off stage. They keep on saying funny things about me, don't they? <laughs> I, I joined the company in its first year, 1962, and it was lovely Peggy Van Prague who asked me to come into the company. And I had a, a really good career as a dancer, and then I went on to the ballet staff and became a ballet master, which I was, I, I, I really loved. And uh, it, it, I, I turned uh, uh, 60, and uh, Maynard Gilgood said, I think it's time that... Uh, you should stop being a, a, a ballet master. And, uh, and she was found dead the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> and so uh, uh, they offered me the, the position of starting an, an education program for the Australian Ballet. And the, the good thing was that every time it looked like I might be asked to leave, I'd say, oh, good, it gives me time to write the book. And they'd all say, what do you mean the book? I said, look, I've got so many stories about all of you. It's going to be a bestseller. And they say, stay another year. <laughs> so I, I did that for 50 years. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then uh, in uh, 2012, 2012, I, I uh, uh, resigned. Uh, uh, and uh, since then, lovely people have been asking me to come back and either teach... Uh, uh, adult beginners, which if you want to come along and have fun at a class, uh, I'm very good. Uh, or, 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 or to do these, these, these guest roles. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've, like we've heard before, a lot of people were more 
character actors than character dancers. And I was a character actor. And I really enjoyed the acting part of being on stage, the, the part of creating a character. And even when I was ballet master and I was, I was uh, under Maynard Gilgood and I was, I was teaching ballets, uh, the thing I really liked to do was to I encourage people to, to not be Colin Peasley on stage, but to be uh, Herr Drosselmeyer or, or whoever you're going to be or one of these people that we're doing it now. And, you know, uh, for, for a performer... It is such a joy not to be your bloody self on stage. To go out there, I've heard stories of uh, of Nijinsky, who who uh, when when it came off stage, it would take him twenty minutes to 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 get out of the character he'd built up for the for the stage. This is lovely. This this shows that this is the greatest dancer in the world. It shows it wasn't all about pointing the feet and clacking your legs together. It was it was about building a role, you know, building a character. Changing yourself so you weren't Nijinsky on stage, you were somebody else. Now, I find that that's, to me, the greatest part of, of, the, of the theatre that I've been able to enjoy. And I do thank you for bringing me back to do it. Thank you. Well, it's Mr Murphy that's been in charge of all of you guys. So we're sort of very quickly coming to the end of our time, which seems not fair because there's so much more to talk about. But... Um, you're, you're back, you're in the season, it's going incredibly well, you're all amazingly wonderful on stage. What has been? What is the hardest part of the ballet for any of you? What, what's the thing that every night you're putting on your makeup going, oh my God, I've got to de get that bit? For me, the hardest part is taking the makeup off at the end. <laughs> I've got so much glue on my bloody face from <laughs> moustaches and beards and things, I can't tell you. Well, you do have many, many different changes. And I, 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 that was the in Sydney um, was the hard part because there were thirty stairs. No, twenty-five, 25 to get to the stage. To to get to the stage and get back again and five in between changes. in between every change. Uh, so uh, uh, and, two hundred and fifty steps a night. Three hundred. Five hundred on matinee day. And, <laughs> and thirty up and thirty down just to get into the opera house. So, 32. But, but here... <laughs> so this, is, this sounds like an exercise program. <laughs> it sounds like so, the, so the Get a, Fit yeah. Nutcracker program, Stairmaster. But this theatre is wonderful oh, because it's all on the same level. <laughs> so we the dancing had, becomes a hard bit. We had so many quick changes and it... Uh, it oh, sorry, again. He's my director. Um, <laughs> we had so many quick changes and... Um, Really, uh, uh, running up the stairs and coming back down and getting there, and we were nervous about that. Was what I found worrying me that I'd make it. But um, here, we rush in and we do it all, and we told Chrissy and uh, Therese uh, that you know this is a quick change. And we we get side stage and we're waiting to go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so wonderful. This space. And, and you're not puffing. From no, the stairs. <laughs> but I had never danced at the opera house. It hadn't been built when I was really dancing. And um, suddenly, uh, you know, I only do the Melbourne season usually and, and Katie Geldard usually does Sydney. And so I'd never done um, – she'd do my role in Sydney or if I went to Adelaide, I'd go to Adelaide. So suddenly uh, Graham said, you know, we want you to do it. And I said, oh, well, if you and Janet are happy for me to do it, love to do it because I'd done it every time. And suddenly I got this email, well, some dreams do come true. Um, we'd like you to do it at the Sydney Opera House. <laughs> 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 so I was so thrilled. I mm. really was. And I did love it. Even with the stairs, I did <laughs> love it. It is an amazing building to walk up to. Oh, and I want then to you take photos all, those stairs. all the time, yeah. every day. Mm, wonderful. And what about you, Christine, coming back to it? Is there anything that you thought, oh, no, I'm not going to mm. look forward to that bit? I, I just, sorry, I just look forward to it every moment, <laughs> every performance, working with these fabulous people. And I just trust that I do it due diligence because it's, it's so special to be part of. And, of course, Joseph, this is your first time because you've been in other productions with us but not The Nutcracker. How was that coming in at it the last minute well with these guys? The other guys had done it in Sydney. Um, we had the newbies. The newbies had um, two rehearsals, four rehearsals. That's and quick. We, were, we did four rehearsals and we did the dress rehearsals. But I think what is... Um, 
important to know is that we're, most of us are in our 70s. These two are the youngest. <laughs> the babies. <laughs> the, the, the babies. babies. Most of us are in our 70s, and there are a couple there that I won't say. In their in their <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true you're laughing, but it's true they're in their 80s. And, f and for me, because I don't really, since I retired, I don't really exercise very much. And, and sadly, uh, if it wasn't for anti-inflammatories, oh. <laughs> yes. uh, it is a bit of a cardio thing. Um, but as far as acting is concerned, we don't really have to act. We are old. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've got to say, it was, it was interesting when... Um, when we were looking at doing Nutcracker again, and I rang Marilyn Jones because she also danced um, the 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 Clara the Elder um, in the last season, and um, I said, "Oh, you know, Marilyn, would you like to come back and and do Clara again?" And she was like, "You realise I'm going to be seventy seven this year," and I was like, "Oh my God!" I mean, I always think of everyone as being my age because I always think of all of you. You are oh, you're in your fifties, like I am. Um, and it, it, but what is so wonderful about this production is that you have these little children. Some of them are eight and nine years old, and then you have our our incredible elders who who bring such um, wisdom and stagecraft to the stage. I mean, no one wants to be on stage with these guys because you know trying to pull focus from. I remember when I was doing the soldier, doctor, lover. It was a daunting. You knocked on that door and you think, oh, God, please let someone look at me. <laughs> because you had all of these wonderful people absolutely making magic and on the stage and, and pulling focus from everyone. So um, it's, it's been a joy to have all of you with us again. And, um, and thank you so much for taking your afternoon off. You're going to be back in the dressing room in a minute, putting the makeup on and getting ready for the show. But um, it's, it's such a pleasure for us to have you all um, in this production. And I think it's the great, mm, I think, incredible um, brilliance of Graham Murphy that he often brings dancers from all sorts of generations together to create these productions. And, and it's been a constant theme through his work. And I think this one is one of the greatest representations of it because it is about the fact that once a dancer, always a dancer, it never leaves you. And, and I think it's great for our audience to be able to experience such incredible um, theatricality on stage. So congratulations to all of you. And thank you so much for being with us and sharing this afternoon. Thank you.